Imagine hearing that a single aisle aircraft is on the verge of reshaping global aviation. On June 15, 2022, the Airbus A321XLR quietly lifted off for its maiden test flight. No big publicity, no dramatic rollout, just four and a half hours gliding through European skies. To the casual eye, it may have looked like an ordinary A321, but in reality, that flight marked the beginning of a major shift in commercial aviation. This wasn't a minor upgrade, it was a complete change in the game. Here was a slender jet capable of flying nearly the same distances as many wide-body airliners, yet at only a fraction of their operating costs. So why is this particular aircraft sparking such excitement within the industry, and what makes it arguably the most strategically important commercial jet of the decade? To understand that, we need to look back. In the early jet age, crossing oceans didn't demand massive airplanes. Aircraft like the Boeing 707 and Douglas DC-8, both single-aisle designs, routinely flew transatlantic routes with impressive range despite their slim build. Then came aviation's golden age in the 1970s, ushering in the era of wide-body giants, the Boeing 747, McDonnell Douglas DC-10, and Lockheed L-1011 TriStar. These two-aisle aircraft offered spacious cabins and, importantly, huge cargo capacity, able to carry freight by the ton. Airbus joined this segment in 1974 with its first jet, the A300, but its bold strategic shift arrived in 1984 with the launch of the A320 program, a narrow-body rival to Boeing's dominant 737. What seemed like just another single-aisle jet would go on to form the foundation of the most commercially successful aircraft family in history. Why then are airlines so fixated on fuel efficiency? The answer lies in costs. Fuel typically makes up about 30% of an airline's operating expenses. Even a 1% boost in efficiency can mean millions in annual savings. By 2010, with oil prices climbing and environmental concerns growing, Airbus introduced the A320neo family, NEO standing for New Engine Option. These weren't just slightly improved engines. The Pratt & Whitney PW1000G and CFM Leap 1A delivered a 15-20% to 20 cut in fuel burn, sharply reduced emissions, and a noise footprint lowered by half. The numbers spoke for themselves. Each aircraft equipped with the new NEO engines delivered substantial annual fuel savings compared to its predecessors. The upgrade rolled out across the A319, A320 and A321, leaving only the smallest sibling, the A318, without the enhancement. Its low sales simply didn't justify the cost. Then came a game-changing step. In 2018, Airbus introduced the A321LR for long range. This version of the A321neo was fitted with three additional center tanks, ACTs beneath the passenger floor, boosting its range to an impressive 4,000 nautical miles. But the real leap wasn't just in fuel capacity. The A321LR also earned ETOPS 180 certification, meaning it could operate routes up to three hours from the nearest diversion airport, even with a single engine out. This suddenly made transatlantic flights possible for a single-aisle aircraft, a territory once reserved exclusively for wide bodies. Yet, as soon as the LR entered service, airlines wanted more, and when a manufacturer pushes a narrow body design to its limits, you get the A321XLR Extra Long Range. Unveiled at the 2019 Paris Air Show, the XLR offered something unprecedented, a 4,700 nautical mile range in a single aisle package. That's enough to fly routes like Perth to the Maldives, London to Delhi, or Singapore to Tokyo without a stop. The secret lay in a new engineering feature, the rear center tank RCT. Unlike the removable ACTs on the LR, the XLR's RCT is a permanent integrated fuel tank placed just behind the wing box. This single tank replaces four standard ACTs, yet adds only the weight of one and takes up the space of just two. The result? More range, more payload, and more cargo capacity. But this raises a bigger question. If single-aisle jets can now fly such long routes, what becomes of the wide body's traditional role? And if you think this aircraft is only aimed at budget carriers experimenting with long-haul flights, think again. 
The A321XLR has attracted more than 550 orders from airlines, representing every corner of the industry. Full-service legacy carriers, low-cost operators, and everything in between. The reason? Unmatched versatility. Take Aerolingus, for example. On their Dublin-New York route, demand peaks in the summer, but drops sharply in the winter. With the A321XLR, they can operate larger A330s during the busy season, then switch to the far more economical XLR during the shoulder months, keeping the route profitable year-round without losing money in the off-season. JetBlue offers another approach. Their A321LRs carry just 138 seats, fewer than some regional jets, so they can fit their Mint business class suites. This delivers a premium experience that commands higher fares, all while maintaining operating costs well below those of a wide-body aircraft. It's this adaptability that has won the XLR such widespread industry support. But like every aircraft design, it comes with trade-offs. In the case of the A321LR, the extra fuel tanks required for long-range flying ate into valuable cargo space that forced airlines into a tricky balancing act, carry more fuel for extended range or preserve belly capacity for revenue-generating freight and baggage, some carriers responded by lowering seat counts and leaning into premium cabin layouts. Fewer passengers meant fewer bags, freeing space for both fuel and cargo. But this was far from a perfect fix. The issue became most evident in payload range performance, a key metric closely monitored by industry insiders. With the A321LR, every flight required constant recalculation. How many passengers? How much cargo? How much fuel? Each decision directly affected the others, limiting operational flexibility. For certain routes like New York to Lisbon, the equation worked, but stretch that to deeper European destinations and the constraints became much tighter. Add in unexpected headwinds and flight planners sometimes had to choose between reducing passenger loads, offloading cargo or adding a fuel stop. Then came a shift that made cargo space even more critical. After 2020, air freight rates soared, belly cargo, freight transported in passenger aircraft, suddenly became a vital revenue stream. Some wide-body flights remained profitable, even with half-empty cabins, simply because of the goods carried below deck. At the height of this period, cargo yields on certain routes climbed above $5 per kilogram, more than three times their pre-pandemic levels. Airlines that once treated freight as a minor supplementary income source suddenly found it making up nearly 40% of total revenue on some services. This exposed a potential flaw in the long-range narrow-body strategy. If too much cargo space was sacrificed for fuel tanks, could these aircraft remain competitive? The industry needed more than a crude trade-off between range and revenue-generating capacity. That's exactly where the A321XLR's integrated rear center tank, RCT, changed the equation. By building additional fuel storage directly into the airframe, instead of placing removable tanks in the cargo hold, Airbus engineers preserved vital belly space while extending range. Airlines no longer had to choose between fuel and freight, they could optimize for both. In many ways, the XLR is a modern successor to the Boeing 757, an aircraft famed for its long-range, operational flexibility and efficiency. But this is the 757 reimagined for the 21st century, with a 25% improvement in fuel economy and cutting-edge systems. The 757, despite ending production in 2004, remained in service for years because nothing else could match its unique capabilities until now. Still, Innovation rarely arrives without hurdles. The European Union Aviation Safety Agency, EASA, raised concerns about the XLR's new tank design, specifically its location in the so-called crush zone, the part of the fuselage most likely to absorb impact energy in a belly landing. The question was both simple and critical. Could this new configuration maintain structural integrity during a survivable crash? EASA wanted more than theoretical assurances. They demanded real-world proof that in a worst-case scenario, a high-energy impact with no landing gear deployed, passengers would not face additional risks from the redesigned fuel system. In response, Airbus began reworking the lower fuselage fairings, 
potentially replacing lightweight composites with stronger materials capable of protecting the RCT during such incidents, these fairings act as the aircraft's first line of defense. In a belly landing they must absorb impact energy, deform in a predictable way, and prevent the tank structure from being breached. This challenge blends material science, structural engineering, and crash dynamics. While the first test aircraft retained the original fairing design, all production models will feature the reinforced configuration, one factor contributing to delays in the program's rollout. This situation captures a constant tension in aircraft development, the drive to innovate versus the strict uncompromising demands of safety certification. Every new system must prove itself, not only in day-to-day -day operations but also under extreme worst-case scenarios that everyone hopes will never occur. Airbus insists that the XLR's design changes will not affect its promised performance. The only real consequence is a delay in entering service. Industry analysts estimate that certification challenges have pushed the program back by roughly 9 to 12 months, significant but relatively minor compared to the multi-year setbacks that have hampered other aircraft programs. In today's commercial aviation world, truly revolutionary aircraft are rare. Incremental improvements have become the norm, which makes the XLR's break from convention all the more remarkable. When Airbus or Boeing unveil new models, they usually represent evolution, not revolution, making the XLR's capabilities stand out even more. Airlines have wasted no time putting it to work. By November 2024, Iberia was already flying the XLR from Madrid to key US destinations like Boston and Washington DC. The feedback, impressively quiet cabins, strong operational performance and fuel efficiency that pleased the accountants. These are classic long and thin routes, long distances but moderate demand, the exact kind of market the XLR was designed to serve. Aer Lingus has followed suit, launching A321 XLR flights from Dublin to Minneapolis. JetBlue plans to operate the type on transatlantic routes from the US East Coast to European city pairs that could never justify a larger aircraft. With 13 XLRs on order, expect some intriguing new connections. LATAM is exploring non-stop flights between northern Brazil and southern Europe, bypassing traditional hubs. Air Canada sees the potential for direct service from Toronto to smaller European destinations such as Funchal, Malaga and Nantes, without the cost and capacity of a wide body. And this is just the beginning. American Airlines will welcome its first XLRs later this year, initially replacing its aging A321T fleet on premium transcontinental services, before expanding into international markets. These jets will feature next-generation business class suites, premium comfort in a single-aisle configuration. Indigo, India's low-cost giant, expects its first XLR mid-year and plans to open routes across Southeast Asia, Central Asia and Eastern Europe, markets long dominated by full-service carriers. Qantas, Wizz Air, Lufthansa, Jetstar and Aerolingus are also preparing strategic deployments for their own XLR fleets. Despite some supply chain delays, industry adoption is accelerating, and it begs the question, what would you do if you could fly non-stop between cities that have never had direct connections before? Because that's exactly what the XLR makes possible. Just imagine the possibilities. Non-stop flights from Kansas City to Frankfurt, Chennai to Nairobi, Perth to the Maldives, routes that were once uneconomical or required a wide body suddenly become practical. In a fleet planner's toolkit, the XLR is less a blunt instrument and more a surgical scalpel. Want to test demand on a new route without the financial gamble of deploying a twin aisle jet? The XLR makes it possible. There's also the environmental advantage. Compared with older generation aircraft flying similar missions, the XLR cuts fuel burn by around 30% per seat, a meaningful leap in an industry under mounting pressure to reduce its carbon footprint. United Airlines is already exploring potential US-Brazil connections using the XLR, while Saudi may tap it for European destinations that can't support wide-body service. The XLR's story is only just beginning. Airlines are watching its operational results closely, and Airbus is almost certainly considering future upgrades, cabin enhancements, aerodynamic refinements, maybe even a stretched variant. Industry speculation ranges from an A322, with greater seating capacity, 
to a Neo Plus model with more powerful engines and extended range, one concept generating buzz among aerospace engineers is the so-called A321XL, a hypothetical stretch adding three to four extra rows while keeping the XLR's remarkable range. Such an aircraft would push further into territory, traditionally held by smaller wide bodies like the Boeing 787. There's even discussion of applying XLR technologies to a next-generation A320 replacement, a topic we've explored in depth in another video on our channel. As for Boeing's answer, for now, it's uncertain. The current 737 MAX family lacks the fuselage diameter needed for auxiliary tanks of the required size. The MAX 10 offers competitive seat counts, but falls far short in range. And Boeing's much-discussed NMA, new mid-market airplane, originally envisioned as a 757 successor, remains stuck in development limbo. That leaves Airbus with what could be a five to seven year monopoly in this niche. In aerospace terms, that's an eternity, enough time to lock in market dominance and cement the XLR as the benchmark for this segment. At its core, the value proposition is simple, true transoceanic range in a single aisle jet, delivering economics no wide body can match. One aisle, two engines, nearly 4,700 nautical miles, and a complete reimagining of what's possible in commercial aviation. For passengers, however, the implications are more complicated.